Hello, humans and other species. I'm Batsy, and today we will be building a steam engine for the new island. Now that we are living inland again, we can finally take out the elytra. That also means that we are going to need tools accordingly, so I asked XT to fix the elytra and some other tools for us. We can't be using the aquatic tools all the time, and I would like it if we eventually have netherite tools and armor. So let's head over there and see what we can get. It's been quite a long time since I used an elytra. It feels so nice to fly again. The world always feels small the moment we are able to fly around it. This would have taken me several minutes in the past. Now just need to find a wild XT. Alrighty, we need one of everything, pretty please and thank you. While we wait for the gear to be enchanted, XT said that they made a new quest room in their base. Let's have a look-see and see what's that about. If I was a room, where would I be? Oh wow, they actually crafted the ring. That's almost impressive but also useless. Break glass in case of server admin rebellion. That's funny. The power of that ring is basically disabled, but I left it in the game because I thought it would be funny if someone spent the countless netherite that takes to craft it. Hold on, I think I'm onto something. This smells like a room to me. If I find out how to get in. Oh my gods, this bedroom is amazing, I love this. This is the best room ever, I need to make myself one of those back at home. Hold on. I seem to have forgotten some items on me. I need to give those to XT. But seriously, that room is so cool. I love it. Now to wait some more until everything is fully done. Might enjoy some nachos while my body is stuck in this bench while we wait. Later that afternoon. It's been several hours now, and I'm starting to think that XT is not coming back. I think he left us here on our own. Some days later. Well. I still haven't seen XT online. I'm starting to believe that something happened to them. I'm joking. I'm sure they're fine. I doubt that they got eaten alive by a whale or something like that. Surely not. Before disappearing, he did manage to complete most of the enchants on the gear though, which is fantastic news for us. Now we can start working on the steam engine. And it would be ideal if we can power up a flight anchor, so we're going to need at least two steam engines. We want some passive power to feed water and lava to the engine. Maybe three big water wheels will be enough for now. Alrighty, all the toolboxes are set up. I'm pretty sure I have enough materials in all of them, so we are good to start this project. Maybe let's wait until it's day again. We still don't have a single light on this island. The initial idea is to have some water wheels on the ledge of this area and have the water run over them and down onto the sea like a waterfall. I think that's going to look quite cool once we decorate it and everything. And so it's not all on the same ledge. We could add the lava and cauldrons at the other side and simply pump the lava across the street to be used for the engines. That's not too bad. It's right on the edge where the stone starts at the bottom and the water will start right at the floor level. That's perfect. I think the waterfall is going to make a nice curve. And sure enough, this looks fantastic so far. It's a bit on the dark side, but I think it's fine. I want to make sure that the proportions look all right, and this looks good. I believe that we should go for two steam engines, but we need to wait for Hulk to bring more blaze burners. I like the idea of having a pipe crossing the street from above. It makes it feel more industrial. Like one of those gas pipelines you see crossing the desert and whatnot. Yes, this looks good, and it will look better once we add the metal girders and brackets. Okay, the mechanical arm doesn't reach that far. I should have seen that coming. That's a bummer, I like the design so far. The easiest thing to do is placing the mechanical arm underneath the blazes. That should reach all of them. Surely. Alrighty, it does reach them all. Now we just need to move the items to the new depots. Nothing that a couple of belts can't fix. Next we place down the fluid tanks. If I'm not mistaken, we need it to be a 3x3 three three and 4 blocks tall. Although I never remember if it's 4 blocks tall or 5. Nah, I'm sure 4 blocks is fine. And of course we ran out of tanks. Good thing I had enough materials for the project. I'm pretty sure I have enough materials in all of them, so we are good to start this project. Nothing that a quick trip to the industrial district can't fix. 
And it also gives us the opportunity to get a feel on the situation. Because I wonder if we really need to make a new workstation at the island, or we should just come here every time we want something. This isn't that far away after all. And there is any machine we could possibly need in here, so why make them again? We'll have to wait and see how we feel about it after a few trips, but that wasn't all that bad. I like it, the proportions look perfect for the size of this ledge. Maybe the angle of the light isn't ideal, but it's a bit too late for that now. And that should be taking care of the water needs. Does that look good to you? There is something off about it. Hmm, I think I like this better, but it's still looking off to me. Wait, I know exactly what it's missing. I will show the humans a cool trick with metal brackets. Can't place one in here because of the connection with the tank. But we can remove the tank behind it. Place the metal bracket on the pipe. And add the tank back into its place. Ah, uh, see, this looks so much nicer now, I like it. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And it's overstressed. Of course it is overstressed. See, that's why you actually want to do the maths, instead of assuming blindly that three water wheels will be enough. Lowering the speed does nothing either. This is well overstressed. For now I fixed the power by only supplying rotation to the pumps, and turned out that three big water wheels is exactly what you need to feed two T9 steam engines with two pumps. I think I will be connecting the rest to the passive engines, since those are still generating 2,000 units each and figure out later how I want to go about solving this issue. With the create mod, I always have the feeling that once you do a machine once or twice, and you end up understanding the fundamentals of how it works, you can probably repeat the process almost blindfolded. Well, obviously not blindfolded, but I mean to say quite easily. What you all think of this? I think it looks good. It's six wide, so I align the pipe with the first half. I like it when things are properly aligned, while they are off-centered. But going back to what I was saying, there are machines in Create that are weirdly satisfying to make. There is something about adding cauldrons and making a lava setup that feels nice to me. It feels satisfying. Since the setup is four blocks thick, I will be adding a two by two tank. We don't really need that much buffer, but it should look better once we start decorating things out. Of course we need some lava in the first place, and I'm pretty sure I don't really have any pointed dripstone left in my storage, so we might have to go get some of that too. I already had to go back to the industrial area about half a dozen times so far, and I'm honestly not minding it. It's one single rocket away from the island. I'm quite convinced that we should simply skip making yet another workstation and use this area instead. And that's one lava setup complete. Now we only need to power it up. The proportions look ideal though, this is exactly what I had in mind. I think this angle is even better for a thumbnail later, this is really getting there. The issue now obviously is the lack of power, which I think I'm going to solve by adding a couple of passive steam engines at the side of the lava. I think that should look good. See what I mean? This looks fantastic. And of course those engines also need power, so we need even more water wheels. Alright, I think I'm finally done here. I basically made a water wheel that powers a steam engine that powers another steam engine that is powered by more water wheels. But the design is quite cool. I like how the water wheels look attached to the passive engines. It really looks like it belongs there. After a few touches here and there, this is what we have so far. I need to fix a couple of stability issues, but the engine is essentially working now. I even went ahead and added a flight anchor to make our lives easier when decorating this thing. And speaking of decorating, that's exactly what we are going to do next. It looks cool and all, but it could look so much better. I have a rough idea in mind of what we are going to do, and this time for real, I do have all of the materials we need for the rest of the project. So without further ado, let's get into a neat little time lapse. Or maybe not because the replay mod decided to break again. I tried tweaking the mods, but it's taking me a while to find which mod is messing with IDs. And now the game crashed entirely, I guess that's no time lapse for us today. Some more hours later. It is done. The build is fully complete. I don't want to wait any extra second to show you all my masterpiece. Check this out. It's cool, isn't it? I actually have no idea how I ended up making a massive skull to cover the steam engine. My plan was to make it look like a thermal power plant. But then I thought maybe a small skull could look neat to cover the lava, and well, one thing lead to another, and here we are. 
I would love to say that I made the design, but I'm nowhere near that good with organics. I found this really cool design for a facade and thought it had the perfect dimensions for this. I will leave the video on how to build this in the description below in case any of you would like to use it too. It's a really nice design. I really like the contrast that the calcite blocks make with the rest of the green ledge, and even the black on the inside which is covering up the steam engine from this side. I tried leaving the steam engine visible, but it wasn't looking as good. I think one of the coolest touches are the water wheels. Moving them inside the school was the right decision. It all came together so well. And the waterfall ended up looking fantastic. I honestly love how everything turned out, couldn't be any happier. I did struggle a bit deciding what to do with the backside, but as I was building the skull and the surroundings, I tried adding a couple of supports, and I honestly loved how it looks. I like it that the steam engine is well visible from this side, but there is more to show than just the looks. There was a depot here that I ended up removing. I simply added a chute underneath the main depot since that pretty much does the same thing. It's a bit hard to see, but I also changed the target of the mechanical arm to be the funnel instead of the depot. That way the output can only be the empty buckets. It's essential to avoid the arm from looping the circuit. We could honestly remove the depot and place a vertical funnel like that, but I like how it looks and it still works perfectly fine, so I'm not too bothered about it. We also ended up having too much excess power from these passive engines. So I took some of that power and moved it to the main steam engine to power up the remaining components. It's a lot more reliable if everything that makes the steam engine work isn't being powered by the same steam engine. Otherwise, you might soft lock it if you overstress the engine, and that's annoying to be constantly fixing. The pumps for the engine are still being powered by the water wheels, but that's not really an issue. And I really love the water wheels here, so might as well put them to good use. As for the other side of the setup, I went for a more classic industrial look, with a good amount of bricks and a bit of a darker roof. Obviously, it also had to have a chimney. It's a steam engine, it needs to have a chimney somewhere. And I managed to make some cool combination for the smoke itself. Two of these campfires are connected to an encased fan, while the other two have nothing underneath. That's why some of them are blowing smoke and black particles, while the others only make the white smoke. I think it's a nice combination so it really looks like stuff is going on. As for the building itself, I kept it as simple as I could. I like to leave plenty of black glass so the inside is visible. I love it when there are particles and things moving around that you can see through the window. The rest are just bricks to give it that stereotypical industrial look. The roof I honestly have no idea what's going on. I tried to keep the deep slate until the edge of it, while keeping that curve I was making. But that was looking quite horrible. Then I just started to try things out, and at some point I ended up with this design that somewhat connects better with the walls and used some metal sheets to cover the fluid tanks, which turned out to be an amazing idea. The most important thing for me was to make it feel like it's divided, but also connected. And that's exactly the feeling I get when I walk along the street. It's meant to be two different buildings that work together, so for me it was important that the setup really shows that they are in fact working together to achieve something. A better way of wording it would be that they are two different parts of the same machine, I really am super happy with how this ended up looking, and I'm so glad that I decided to search around YouTube for some help to build the skull. I honestly don't mind that it's not my own design, because I know that if it was down to me, I wouldn't have had the courage to even try it. That's not the end of the good news, because I also had some ideas for future episodes, and I had the time to think through some of the ones we already discussed. The first idea was to make a ship here for the workstation and some starting stuff. That won't happen for two different reasons, but there will be something better instead. Many of you suggested that I should make a shipwreck. It will look so much cooler, and it will make a whole lot more sense on why is that there. In case you haven't noticed, it looks mighty hard to get in there with a functional ship. Well, without crashing against the island entirely. So as suggested by many of you, we will be adding a shipwreck. But that will happen in a later episode. Next week I still want to make a boat, because I like the idea that we came here via boat, maybe exploring or looking for ways to communicate with Jones or something like that. We still have that massive fella in our industrial area, so we need to do something about it at some point. 
Right now he seemed to be happy with eating all of the fish we produce with both of the fishing farms, but it would be nice if we could at least become friends or something. Either way, that's for a later episode. Next week I want to make a pier or something in this island. Something simple in this corner so we can keep our boat. The idea is that it's the transport we use to come here, so it makes sense if the boat has some storage. I also want to make it a fishing boat, so we can add one single deployer to get some fish for us and that will also solve the problem of the food. As for the workstation goes, I honestly think that our best idea is to just use the industrial district, because that thing is there for a reason. Why make twice the same machines when we have them so close to base anyway? But that's for future Batsy to worry about. I have a different task for all of you. We need to decide on the next project after the boat, and so far the ideas are as follow. The first thing that we could do is a tree farm. I thought it could be cool to make it shaped like a tree trunk or something, and have it with roots hanging from both sides of the upper area. I'm not entirely sure how would that work, but it's an idea. Then we have the cobble generator, or in general some sort of quarry to make stones. Right now we are buying stones, so at some point, we should start producing some. We also need to eventually produce some moss. We still have plenty of it, but at some point we're going to run out of it. Maybe that's something that could be done in the swamp or something, I'm not sure. And lastly the shipwreck from before. I'm leaving this one for last because I have no idea on how I'm gonna make a shipwreck. Building the sails and all in an angle and half broken sounds like a pretty hard task to do. And also because that's something that we might potentially ask someone in the server to help me with, so maybe we pay someone to do it for us at a later point. Make sure to leave a comment with the project that you would like to see next. And maybe use the same comment to suggest future projects that we could make, or just ideas of cool builds that we can use later on to store a farm or something inside. One last thing that I wanted to mention is the style of this video. It wasn't perfect, but I used new ways of recording and editing to move towards the new style, and I have already seen many things that can be improved. Without roasting me too much in the comments, I would love to hear in general what you think of the pace and flow of this episode. Doesn't need to be super specific and critical, just that if in general felt good or not. And with that said, this will have to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.